Good evening. Welcome to this first Wednesday in Lent, our Lenten service. We're so glad that you're here. Welcome to those who are online as well watching. God's blessings to you. And uh, thankful that we could get together for, uh, if you didn't come to eat tonight, hopefully you can come another night to eat, because we start at six, and you can come anywhere between there and a quarter to seven and, and get some food most likely still. So thank you to those who provided the food tonight, the soup, sure appreciate it, and the dessert is very good. It's hard to believe it's Lent already. It seems like we just had Christmas. But uh, and it's kind of one of those hard seasons you go into because it, you're leading up to Jesus' crucifixion and, of course, his resurrection. But at the same time, it's, uh, we have to hear all those scriptures again eventually. And it reminds us of the great cost that he paid for us and the great love that he has for us. So tonight, uh, we are going to be going through some familiar scriptures we typically have on a, on a Wednesday night, the first Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. But uh, after that, we're going to be focusing on the Ten Commandments, along with uh, Jesus' words uh, addressing some of those, and it leads us up to his crucifixion. So I look forward to that, and I hope that you can too, and that we would all be blessed by his word and his spirit in our midst. Let's go ahead and uh, begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and I invite you to stand, and we'll sing, Change My Heart, O God. You can, it's on the screen and also in your uh, bulletin. <clears throat> Let's take a moment uh, for a silent confession. You may be seated. Well, some silent confession, and then uh, I will share a, a scripture uh, after our prayer. So, Father, we just take this moment to come before you in confession that we have sinned in d- different ways, ways which we are aware of and some which we may not be. We just bring our attention to these things in this time, God as we confess them to you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to do the response of reading with me of Psalm 51, verses 1 through 19, and we'll do it according to uh, what's in the bulletin there and on the screen. Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, 
blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being, and in the hidden part you will wake me with no wisdom. Purify me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create to me a clean heart, O God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation, Then my tongue will joyfully sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. By your favor, do good to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteous sacrifices, in burnt offering, and whole burnt offering. Then young bulls will be offered on your altar. Just a reminder about that Psalm 51. Of course, it's a Psalm of David. It's when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. And then from Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. Amen. Are there any announcements that you'd like to make at this time or anything like that? I have a couple sign-ups back there. One for Lenten services for making soup and, and desserts, I believe. And also one for the ham dinner, the potato ham dinner coming up. On, uh, in really very first Sunday of March, but there's opportunity to sign up for certain things there. You'll find that on the little credenza back there, I think. Yes? Oh, and, and one for snacks for Mission Sundays. Anyone, we, someone for some Sunday, okay? So there's a bunch of opportunities to take a look at those before you rush down the stairs. Take a good look at those so you can see, hey, I could do that. All right, thank you. Anything else? All right. Any particular prayer requests you want to publicly lift up? I will go ahead and pray. Let's pray. Father, holy are you and mighty are you. So awesome that you forgave David's sin and you forgive our sin. We know repentance comes before that and we say thank you for that, God. And we just pray to keep us mindful of your presence with us and that we come to you in prayer and scripture reading and any other spiritual discipline you put before us you want us to do, Lord. Help us to do that by your grace and by your leading. We say thank you so much, God, for this opportunity to gather. We pray again your blessings on those who 
are struggling with health, bless them. God, help them to be aware of your healing touch. Thank you, God, that you have blessed us so much. We pray that we too can be a blessing to others. We pray our blessings on our schools and on the churches in this area, God. We pray that we will faithfully lift up your word and your law and your gospel. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We pray your blessings on this nation. We pray in particular your protection upon this nation. We know that we have had open borders. We know that people with uh, malcontent, people with uh, wicked ideas are coming across. Not all of them, of course, but many. And we pray, Father, for your protection. We pray that uh, the threats that are represented there will be thwarted. And we pray that uh, people will turn their eyes to you instead of to violence or anything like that. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Just checking tonight. Uh, sometimes we plan these, but is there anybody who has a testimony they want to share with us, something recent happened or anything like that? And if there's not one tonight, that's okay. But if there is, we welcome it. Doesn't have to be long. It can be very short. It might be just a few sentences. Anything come to anybody's mind? Okay. Hopefully we can have one for next week. <clears throat> right. Scripture. Old Testament reading tonight is found in the prophet of Joel, Joel chapter 2, uh, verses 12 through 19. That's found on page 645 in your pew Bibles. Joel chapter 2, starting at verse 12. Even now, declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. And he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and have pity, or leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, Call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. The Lord will reply to them, I am sending you grain, new wine and oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. And the next reading is found in 2 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 20 through 6, chapter 6, verse 10. That's found on page 819 in your pew Bibles. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. 
I let you now, or I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness, in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Here ends the readings. Any children coming up tonight? We got some, I want to do something here. Come on up. How about the little guy back there? Is he coming back? Okay. Have a seat. And we'll wait for you to come down. All right. Gonna, here we go. I wasn't, think, I wasn't calling you little guys, talking about the little one over there, just so that you know. I wasn't thinking of you there. We have a, an interesting word tonight we're going to look at. Let's see what you know about it, okay? Let's see, I'll get up here. Wonderful, glad you're here. All right. So, ambassador, ambassador. You know what an ambassador is? Ever heard of an ambassador? Sometimes we might hear them in the news, an ambassador to a foreign nation. They're an official representative of our government, you know, the federal government usually. And so you've got somebody who is officially representing, like the United States of America. They're an ambassador to different countries. So from our country to their country, they represent our country. All right, so. Do you ever, did you know that you are an ambassador also? Can you sit up? Did you know you're an ambassador? Did you know that? You're not going to go to another country probably and represent the United States, but in the Bible, Austin just read that we are ambassadors. Should I find that for you real quick and read it to you? Listen to this. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. We're Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. So if we're Christ's ambassadors, believe, if we're as Christians and we're followers of Jesus, we believe in him, that means we officially represent him. Did you know that? A follower of Christ is also called what? Disciples, yeah. What else? What? We had some Jews are Christians, that's right. Believers, I'm looking for a really obvious one. It stands for little Christians. Oops, I said it wrong. I meant to say little Christ. <laughs> I said it wrong. You got it right away. We're Christians. So that means we're little Christ in a sense that Luther would say. And we're representatives of, we represent Christ. So we represent Christ. What does that look like? If you want to show who Jesus is, wherever we go, it's by how we act, it's by how what we say, is what we tell about what he's done in our life. All these different ways, we are ambassadors for Christ. You can be an ambassador for Christ with your friends, with your, amongst strangers. Anywhere we go, we represent Jesus if we're followers of Jesus, right? Does that make sense? Do you know what I'm saying? You represent your parents too, did you know that? If you go someplace or if you're doing something or in school, 
if, they, if you do something you're not supposed to and you get in trouble, you, it reflects on your parents and they say, what are you thinking? You know, they, you are an ambassador in a sense for your family. But as a Christian, we're an ambassador for Christ. And that's a, a lifelong thing. And we get to show other people what Jesus is like. And that's quite a privilege. Because people who don't know Jesus can't do that. Only people who know Jesus can say, who Jesus is and what he's like. Well, again, I'm going to read that verse to you. Listen closely. Paul says in verse 20 of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he says, We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We can tell who God is, who can tell who Jesus is, because we represent him, because we follow him. We belong to him. Let's pray. Ready? Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity that you give us to represent you as ambassadors for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. It's from Matthew chapter 6. Verses 1 through 21. Jesus is speaking here. Lord, bless our hearing and reading of your word. Amen. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand, a pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not pray. Keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast... Put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break it and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break it and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It's trustworthy and true and gives life. Bless us as we ponder it more in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Have you ever seen those wanted posters? 
Ever had your face on a wanted poster? I mean, like, for fun? <laughs> it doesn't look too real, you know, because it's usually nice-looking kind people who are on the poster and they're smiling or something like that. But those wanted posters were pretty necessary to be able to see what somebody looks like so that you can go ahead and identify them. Because there's something that goes along with identifying somebody. What is it that you might get? A reward. Yeah. Sometimes it's a lot of money. Sometimes it's not as much. I haven't seen or noticed on FBI, you know, most wanted posters, if there's money attached to those or not. But the old school ones, the ones back in the Wild West, apparently, used to have money attached to it, typically. Maybe $200 or maybe 1000 if they're really needed to get them. If you're quick to receive a reward for doing something, which would you prefer? Would you want a quick and fleeting reward if you wanted that uh, right away? Or would you want to have something that maybe is longer lasting? Typically, I think if you were to go walk around and say, hey, I've got $10 for you now, or later on sometime I'll give you 50. What do you want? I would think most people are probably going to say, I'll take the 10 now. Because <laughs> they can get it right now and they'll have it. I didn't try that experiment. I didn't quite have enough money to do that. But if you want to do it with me sometime, we'll go to the mall or go some downtown Wapaton and try that. See what happens. Most of us might not, not knowing what the reward is exactly, choose the longer lasting one. Someone might just like to have the reward now, and it's tangible, isn't it? You can have it. You can see it. You've got it. It gives satisfaction. It gives pleasure now as opposed to later, not knowing when that might be or what it's going to be. Did you know that there are rewards for doing spiritual things? It seems kind of like a strange thing, doesn't it, to think rewards because I, I'm faithful or doing spiritual, religious things? But there are. Rewards is not something we talk a lot about, but they can be had. And the rewards you get for doing spiritual things, it all depends upon the source and what it is. I think of uh, some verses that I want to pull out to you here. I mentioned just a few of them. You might think, well, what are these rewards? What are these verses? You can Google it if you like to, or whatever search engine you use. I'm using a different one. But Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. It says, love your enemies and do good and lend and expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. You'll be sons of the Most High. That's Luke 6.35. You can go on and on and find many of them. One person uh, uh, asked in 1 Corinthians 9, what then is my reward? Here's from Hebrews 10. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward. Rewards, I think, in many ways in the present, but also rewards in the future. Source makes a difference, though. Jesus illustrated this idea several times in our chapter in Matthew 6 today. <clears throat> Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. Wow. Rewards for doing acts of righteousness can be had now from people, or rewards can be had from our Heavenly Father to be had now or now and later. If a person seeks praise from people, that will be all that person gets from God. Is a praise that came from those people. When we seek praise from people, we are making it about ourselves. We bring attention to ourselves instead of to God, who supplies our needs. In verse 3, Jesus said, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving then may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And so with that, I think that it's a fascinating thing that we are so eager to 
in our head sometimes want to still get that short-term reward. Isn't that just weird how that is? I mean, I want, well, praise from people, though, it does not last. But God's does. All right. I think when you don't know what your left hand is doing or your right hand is doing, neither hand is supposed to know, that's really secret giving. <laughs> Doesn't say your brain can't know, but keep it secret. Jesus tells his followers to not be loud in proclaiming what, what we have done. Giving is to be quiet, secretive, and it trusts God to reward instead of looking for reward from people. Rewards for giving can be had at the moment from other people, or rewards can be had from our Heavenly Father to be now or now and later. Now about prayer, I don't think I know anyone who loves to show off in public praying. <laughs> most people are hesitant to pray in public, and most people don't want to pray in public. So it makes you wonder about who is being spoken about here. Perhaps it's directed to the priests or to the professionals or to the Pharisees or the pastors, so to speak, of the day. Nothing wrong with praying in public, but to be seen by people, and that's why you're doing it, there's a problem. It lifts up oneself, praises oneself instead of praising the one that we're praying to. Jesus said, when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Can't think, help but think of that uh, movie that came out by the Kendrick Brothers a number of years ago called War Room. Anybody see War Room? Anybody know a couple people saw War Room? I happen to have it. If you want to borrow it sometime, it's worth seeing. It's about, uh, it's about a prayer closet in a sense and a great prayer that was done by a lady. Which do you think is better when all is said and done? Rewards from people or rewards from our Heavenly Father? Have you ever fasted or considered fasting? Don't show your hands. <laughs> have you ever considered it and have done it? You've probably experienced that you get hungry. You might get weak, and that's why you should maybe check with your doctor first to see if you should do it. You probably know whether or not you should do it. Fasting causes your stomach to hurt, and that's supposed to trigger you to think, thank you, God, for providing for me. It's to cause you to pray. Fasting is to direct you to God so that you will pray to him. Hunger reminds us that God supplies, too. Fasting is to lead us to praise and to pray. After Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan to turn stones into bread. And that is something that he did not give into. He didn't cave into that temptation, did he? It was a temptation that's kind of like uh, instant gratification, even though he'd gone 40 days without food. And he said no to that because he trusted his heavenly father. He did not need to selfishly perform a miracle for himself. Jesus told Satan, it's written, man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hunger reminds us to take in God's word too, to trust him. So fasting is to be done in secret in such a way that we don't seek praise from others or doing it. It doesn't mean you can't tell someone, but if you're telling someone to look for praise, like, wow, you're really special, you're really spiritual, I, I could never do that. Be careful. You can lose your reward from your Heavenly Father. I think it's funny. I remember back in college when I was at, I was at Augustana for a year and a half, my last year and a half of school, and I remember we were going to, students were all planning to fast or do something, like some kind of agreement, and, and there's this one guy I remember who, was just boasting about it and telling everybody about it, thinking, oh, he doesn't get it, you know. He's telling everybody he's fasting and, and, and how hard it is. I thought, oh, shoot, he missed the boat. But it's to be done secretly. 
we're not to look for praise from others, but instead to praise God. To get our heart in the wrong place and to try to bring attention to ourselves is too easy to do. To seek encouragement and attaboys and whatever it might be. Praise should go to God. Jesus spoke about treasures in the last part of our reading for the day. <clears throat> he said, do not store for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's really what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, it's where where's our treasure lie? Does it lie in myself or does it lie in God? Living for Jesus each day is like an opportunity to praise God, an opportunity to be, like you talked about the kids, an ambassador for Jesus. We may not have the words that we're to say all the time when we go around with people, but how we react to people, how we show love, how we show kindness and patience does make a difference. And sometimes we'll have opportunity with words as well. And we should ask God to give us those. Jesus wants us to have rewards from our Heavenly Father. Why? Because He's a generous God. He has treasures for us in heaven. Treasures and rewards. He's generous. And He lavishes His love and generosity upon His children. His rewards are eternal. His rewards mean that our heart is in the right place. Austin read earlier from Joel chapter 2. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. It's return to God, not return to myself, <laughs> not for praise. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. There are many rewards for doing spiritual disciplines, for taking time for God. I think we will experience some of them here as we notice God working on us, as we notice God changing us and uh, shaping us to be more like him. These rewards are blessings from him. May we always seek God's reward, our Heavenly Father's reward, not from other people, though. Otherwise, we must repent and be made right in the Lord. So, Lord, help us in this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for Jesus' teaching on the importance of of coming near to you, whether it be by giving or whether it be by praying or forgiving or whatever it might be, God, all these different things we talked about. Help us to seek your reward and not the praise of people. Help us to praise you, God, and point to you to be those ambassadors where, for you wherever we go. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's sing, I lay my sins on Jesus, number 396. Spot. 
Would you please stand? Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let's do the benediction first, then the doxology, all right? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.